Come on, come on, stand to your feet. Let's go ahead and get into this word, y'all. Come on. We're going to just read the first six verses just to recap um, what we were dealing with on last week. I can handle the pressure. Amen. I can handle the pressure because how many of y'all know that if there has ever been a season that we have been under pressure, we are sure living in one right now. There is pressure coming from all sides, and God has given me something, y'all, to share with y'all to help y'all to understand what he is trying to do in this season. Look at Job chapter 1 beginning at verse 1 I'm only going to read the first six verses I'm going to read the first six verses y'all but God is trying to speak to us um, this morning to help us to understand where we are going in this season the problem is many of us are asking questions instead of saying God whatever you're doing just don't do it without me <sighs> watch this y'all there once was a man named Job who lived in the land of Uz. He was blameless, a man of complete integrity. He feared God and stayed away from evil. Listen to this, y'all. He had seven sons and three daughters. He owned 7,000 sheep. The man had it going on. He had 3,000 camels, 500 teams of oxen, and a 500 female donkeys. He also had many servants. He was, in fact, the richest person in, the, in that entire area. Job's sons would take turns preparing feasts in their homes, and they would also invite their three sisters to celebrate with them. When these celebrations ended, sometimes after several days, Job would purify his children. He would get up early in the morning and offer a burnt offering um, for each of them. For Job said to himself, perhaps my children have sinned and have cursed God in their hearts. This was Job's regular practice. One day, the members of the heavenly court came to present themselves before the Lord, and the accuser, Satan, came with them. Keep going, Marcia. Go to verse 7. Where have you come from, the Lord asked Satan. Satan answered the Lord, I have been patrolling the earth, watching everything that's going on. We can stop right there, y'all. I'm going to hop into this subject called, can I, I can handle the pressure, but let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to sit at your sit at our tent doors, oh God, waiting and anticipating to hear a word from you. God, we need you right now. We ask, oh God, that you would fill this place with your spirit. Touch every heart, God. Break our hearts up so that um, we are prepared to receive what it is you have for us on today. Because we believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Last week, we talked about the fact that um, in this season, God is um, doing just what he did with Job. For many of us, we need to understand that the reason why Job was going through what he was going through, number one, was because he was God's primary choice. And the reality is where we find ourselves in this season, the bottom line is God has called us and God has found all of us to be his primary choice. It's easy, Dennis, when we are his primary choice, when all things are going well and, and we're getting promotions and we're buying new houses and we're getting cars. We want to be God's primary choice then, but, but how many of us understand that there's another flip side to that thing, that God will make you his primary choice when he's trying to prove to the enemy that he ain't got no power. I wish I had somebody here that will walk with me real quick because he helped us to understand that, that being the primary choice means that God will call you in seasons when you don't even understand or want to be called in. It helped us to understand y'all that, that being God's primary choice, it means that sometimes you will be singled out and God will say, Satan, have you considered my servant? And I don't know about y'all, but I want to be in position that, that God can consider Consider me even when things are not going the way that I want them to go because it means that God has been watching me to the point where he understands that I'm prepared for whatever comes my way. Do I have any strong believers in here this morning that understands that, that when you become God's primary choice, it, it's because God has been watching you day and night. It's because he's been ha watching you handle every situation that you've been going through. You become his primary choice and watch this. 
the enemy don't even know how to handle you when you come to the understanding of who you are and how much power and strength you really do have and how many of y'all know you don't know how strong you are until you have to go through a little bit of hell do I have anybody in the building this morning that that's ever been through anything you've been through some seasons when you didn't know how God was going to bring you through it but when you look back over that season God has made you stronger for the day that you're standing in do I have any strong believers in here that'll declare I ain't get to where I am by not going through some hell in my life in fact I thought I was going to die in fact the devil looked like he was winning but do I have anybody in here that'll raise your hand and declare I'm a survivor and I'm still here I wish I had somebody that could declare I can handle anything because God has given me power y'all watch this he helps us to understand we become his primary choice. But then he helped us to understand last week, Brother Max, that, that he has all sovereignty, that, that, that God has perfect sovereignty. In other words, there is nothing that happens that gets by God. And some of us don't even realize that when you find yourself going through tough seasons, Mama, we need to understand that it ain't the devil being busy. It's God saying, have you, have you tried my servant? You ought to just look at your name and say the reason why you're going through this season is not because God took his hands off you it's because God got his hands on you do I have anybody that understands God will let you go through a season of hell just to prove to everybody around you that you're able to make it through hell and high water do I have anybody that understands you are proof that God is still able you are proof that God is a healer you are proof that God is a way maker you are proof that God is a bridge over troubled waters. You are proof that God is a rock in a weary land. You are proof that God is a wheel in the middle of a wheel. You are proof. You are proof that God is still sovereign. You prove to the devil day by day that we serve a God who is still in control. But watch this, y'all. God shows us things in the natural to help us to understand things in the spiritual. And I say, God, I need you to give me something so I can help everybody to understand where we are in this season. And y'all, I was sitting there watching TV, and he showed me a baseball game. He said, you asked for it, I'm going to give it to you. He said, I need you to just pay attention. He says, look at this baseball game. He says, life is just like this baseball game. He said, there's a pitcher on the mound. And everybody has to go and stand before that pitcher. And watch this. The pitcher is trying to get everybody out that steps in front of him. How many of y'all know that we are just like that pitcher? The pitcher is the devil, and every one of us got to stand before him one of these days. Can you look at somebody and tell them, if you ain't been through nothing, you better get ready because something new is going to come your way. Do I have anybody that understands? Watch this. He says, in this analogy, catch this, Gabby. He says the pitcher's job is to get everybody out that steps in front of him. Can I help y'all MVPs? Anybody that steps before the enemy or stands in front of the enemy is his job to destroy you. And what this is what God showed me. God said everybody is going to get a chance to stand before the enemy. Because how many of y'all know the text says he was going to and fro seeking whom he may devour. Can you look at somebody and tell them he might not have come at your doorstep yet. But how many of y'all know that he's going to come eventually. He's going to come to your doorstep one of these days and you got to understand that when he comes he's on an assignment Dennis this thing messed me up he says because in a baseball game watch this he helps us to understand that everybody in the game is under some pressure because the reality is everybody wants to win. And here's the crazy piece that messed me up. The baseball game, watch this. There's an enemy on the other side. Can I say it one more time? Watch this, bruh, Pen. He says, Teron, there's an enemy on the other side that's not only trying to get you out, but he's trying to get everybody that thinks like you out. But the problem with the body of Christ is we're not focusing on the right enemy. We're too busy messing around going against each other and not lifting each other up that he can't do his job do i have anybody that understand the devil ain't gotta work hard because we working against each other but do i have anybody that understand we on the same team when you look at my jersey i got on the same jersey you got on when you look at the
Matter of fact, I'm trying to win just like you. Everybody's on the same. We're on the same team. But watch this, Mom. We're on the same team. And what God showed me is he's trying to strike out everybody. He's no respecter of person. Watch this. We might not have had a Texas to happen in Norfolk. But how many of y'all know that we going through some stuff in Norfolk? He showed me, Gabby, the pitcher, when he would throw the ball, it wasn't the same pitch every time. Sometimes he'd throw a curveball. Sometimes he'd throw a fastball. Sometimes he would throw a changeup. How many of y'all know that every now and then the enemy is starting to throw some change-ups in your life? And you're trying to figure out what in the world is this? It's the enemy trying to shift up some stuff in your life and get you off. But watch this. Everybody's getting pitched to. The devil is trying to kill everybody. And the reality is, he says, watch this. Everybody gets a chance at bat. Okay, okay, okay. Watch this. You might not be going through anything this week, but your neighbor sitting beside you was going through hell. You might not have had to deal with the things that they dealt with, but how many of y'all know that the devil threw you a pitch too? But here's the crazy piece, mama. When I saw them at bat, everybody in the dugout was cheering them on because they recognized that we were on the same team. Do I have anybody in the building that understands that when your neighbor is at bat, you might as well be at bat too. Do I have anybody that understands you better celebrate your neighbor. You better give God glory for your neighbor even when you're not at bat. Do I have anybody that will rest up on your feet and say, God, I bless you for my neighbor. I bless you for what they're going through. I bless you, God, for when you bless them. Every time you give them a miracle, I celebrate God because miracles are in my way. Trying to hurry up, but watch this. Watch this. I'm trying to hurry up. I'm looking at the clock. Everybody has on the same uniform. Look at your neighbor and tell them, you better put on the whole arm of God. You better have on the helmet of salvation. You better have on the breastplate of righteousness. Do I have anybody that knows that the problem with some of us is you ain't got all your armor on? The problem with some of us is you looking for the internet to make you think that you somebody. But how many of y'all know that as long as you're a child of the most high God, you can give God praise right where you are. You ain't got to be like everybody else and you ain't gonna need no friends to tell you that. I'm trying to get through this. Watch this. Here is the other problem, mama. When I looked at the baseball analogy, the person was at bat. There was somebody else in the box. There was somebody else in the box on deck. Won't no balls being thrown at him. But he was in the box practicing. Just like it was a ball coming. How many of y'all know that you ain't gotta wait till the devil show up? You gotta be on your knees before he come. You got to be in church giving him glory before he come. Do I have anybody that understands? You ain't gotta wait till you get at that to start rehearsing like the devil's already there. You got to get in the box. Do I have anybody that'll take a swing at the devil? He ain't through nothing yet, but. I wish I had some worshipers in here that'll say, devil, I ain't gonna wait for you to throw the ball my way. I'm gonna be in the box. He said, he said, Tehran, look, the problem with many believers is that they wait until they get at bed to get prepared. But if you're ready, you ain't got to get ready. Do I have any ready believers in here? If you're ready already, you ain't got to get ready when you get in the box. 
watch this. This other thing he showed me. The other thing he showed me is, is that you got to prepare for the battle before the battle comes. You got to already have such a relationship with God that the enemy ain't got to push you to hell to get you to start exercising your faith. You got to exercise your faith before hell comes. Okay. Look at the seats beside you. Some of them ain't in here. They ain't full right now. You know why? Because there's some folk that things are going well in their lives. So I can take the Sunday off and I could go to the beach. But as soon as that Negro, that brother, walks out of their life and they thought he was the boys, they'll be in church at the altar saying, Lord Jesus, help me. But do I have anybody that understands? I'm going to show up while everything is good. I'm going to show up when it looks like I'm losing because the devil can't. So, Janika, you got to be ready before the battle comes. But watch this. The pressure is on even though, watch this, it looks like it's a team sport. Lit. The whole baseball team is working together. But when you get at bat, it becomes personal. When you get at bat, it becomes personal even though it's a team sport. And watch this. He showed me this, Dennis. The bases were loaded. The brother gets up to the plate and the pressure is on because he realizes if I get out, everybody out there that was depending on me, they gonna get out. So he says, when I get to this bet, it's not just about me. How many of y'all know that God don't bless you just for you? God will give you some stuff so you can bless everybody around you. Do I have anybody that understands that God will use you as a tool to bless everybody? But here's the crazy piece. Here's the crazy piece. Problem is, some of us don't understand that even though you may be scared, even though you might not understand the season, you ain't never seen this pitch before. Did you see the way that ball did what it did? I ain't never seen a pitch like that. But what I've learned is, is that when you get at bet, whatever the devil is throwing your way, you just got to tell yourself, just swing. If I just swing and I have faith, how many of y'all know that God will take it from there? Sometimes you got to, you got to swing even though you don't know where it's going to go. You got to swing even if it don't look like you're going to hit it. You got to swing anyhow. Gabby, this thing is crazy. And what he showed me was Job had to swing even though he didn't understand the pitch. He did not understand. What is the devil throwing my way now? Y'all heard it? He said he had oxen. Job had it going on. What is this pitch right here? But he helped us to catch this. Watch this. He just had to swing. But here's the other kicker. Not only, Gary, do you have to at least swing, but after you swing, you can't leave it there. You got to be able to run. How many of y'all are willing to run the race even though you're tired and ready to give up? How many of y'all are willing to run not just for you, but for the other people that's on the base? You got to be able to push everybody that's out there already. Do I have any runners in the building that will get out your seat, that will run in place and declare, God, I made up in my mind, I'm running for Jesus. Is there any runners in the building that will declare when I swing it, I'm going to take off. I don't know how it's going to work. I don't know how this thing going to work. But watch this. But I got to make up in my mind that I got to swing 
because I got to push everybody. Y'all, the other day, young lady came in church. She came in church and she was broke. And she wasn't even in Texas. She just began to cry. And we began to dialogue about this thing. How can the devil assign somebody to go into an elementary school? Tell the teacher, good night, and kill her. How can he shut the door? Unload an arsenal on babies. And while we're sitting there dealing with this thing, hurt, because the reality is it could have been our children. And I had to ask my question, myself the question. I said, God, how do we handle this? How do we handle the pressure of understanding that if you go to the grocery store, that could be the day that the brother next door lost his job. He mad at everybody. God said, he said, son, I need you to understand. He says, I ain't changed my plans for you. He said, there are plans for good and not for bad. He said, there are plans for a future and a hope. He said, so while all of y'all are in this place because y'all I was feeling right down last week I really started feeling like the devil was winning because lawmakers aren't doing anything to change the situation and then God spoke to me and said why are you waiting on them he said I got a body of believers that are supposed to be world changers he said, if they won't do it, he says, y'all, y'all got to change it. He says, but how you handle the pressure is that you first of all understand that you primary choice. But watch this. Here's my third point. I'm about to get out of here. I'm, oh my God. Yeah, I'm almost, I'm almost there. Point three is, watch this. If we're going to handle the pressure, we have to trust in God's point three, perfect covenant. Look at somebody and tell them I got relationship with them. I got, I got relationship with them. I got relationship with them. And, and my relationship is not dependent on what your relationship is. I don't know what you have gone through in your life. I just know my testimony. And my testimony is every time it looks like the devil was winning in my life, the God that I serve stepped in and made a way out of no way. I don't know about y'all, but when I look at my testimony, you weren't there when I was in the closet crying, asking God to move you. You weren't there. So because I understand that God, under God, 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 God has a perfect covenant with me. And as long as I stay in right relationship with him, God is going to keep me. Do I have anyone out there that will declare, I got a relationship with God and you ain't got to know how I got here. You might see what I got now, but you won't there when I lost everything. You won't there when it looked like I wasn't going to win. Do I have any winners in the building that, that would declare I'm winning now but you should have been there. It's a perfect, it's a perfect covenant because watch this. <laughs> You got to understand that, that, that you got a relationship with God. And the old folks used to put it like this. What God has for me, it is for me. Now, I can handle the pressure because God, the God that I serve, he never failed me yet. Anybody ever heard the song by Anthony Brown? Anthony Brown put it like this. How many times has God ever lost? Then he says, not once. How many times did he drop the ball? He says, not once. How many times has he ever failed you? Not once. Can you look at somebody and tell them, I don't know about you, but the Lord is blessing me right now. He woke me up this morning and he started me on my way. God ain't never failed me yet. And he never, he never will. Because I got perfect covenant with him. And that means if I got perfect covenant with him, he will keep every one of his promises. But I got to trust him. And I got to recognize this thing is bigger than me. Watch this verb. Here's my last point and I'm out, y'all. 
my last point is if we're going to handle the pressure, we have to have point four, persistent posture. Okay, I'm going back to my baseball analogy. One of the batters was up, Gabby. And normally, when they're in the box, you will see their posture start to change when the umpire don't call the right call. They know it was a ball, but he called strike. You knew it was a, you knew that one was a strike, but he called ball. And God showed me some, y'all, because when all hell breaks loose in your life, sometimes, y'all, our posture changes. And we start to look like we can't handle it anymore. How many of y'all know that even if you can't handle it, you can't let the devil know? Mama, I was in boot camp. We had to stand before all of these officers and they would ask us a question and you had to fire it off back at them. Lit one day, I was standing in front of the officer. He asked me the question. And in my mind, I said, I don't know the answer to this. But let I, some inside of me said, fire it off like you know it. I fired the answer off. And he looked at me. And he walked away. After that captain left, my drill instructor said, come here, Rogers. He said, I looked at you when that officer stood in front of you. He said, and when, you, when he asked you the question, you fired it off like you owned it, like you knew it. He said, Rogers, the answer was wrong. He said, but the way your posture was and the way you fired it back at him, he had no choice but to go to the next one. Do I have anybody that understands that when you look at the devil in his eyes and say, devil, get behind me. When you rebuke the enemy, he got to go to the next one that's weaker than He got to go to the next one that's weaker than you. But you got to let the devil know you can't stop me. I don't care what I'm going through. I can handle the pressure. No matter what you throw my way, I got persistent posture. I ain't going to change. I'm going to believe him even when it looks bad. I'm going to believe him when it looks good. I'm going to celebrate when I ain't got nothing to celebrate. Because if I celebrate now, I'll show sure never know how to celebrate when God opens up my door. Do I have anybody that's in here this morning that will celebrate God like your door is already open? Do I have any worshipers that will rise up on your feet and declare, I'm going to give God glory, I'm going to keep my posture, and I'm going to stay. Come on and rest on your feet. Come on and rest on your feet. I know somebody else who was going through hell. He was drugged from judgment hall to judgment hall. He didn't do a thing. But each time he stood, Bible says he said, he never said a mumbling word, but he kept his posture. Bible helps us to understand, Dennis, that they hung him high and they stretched him wide. But this is what he said on the cross. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. But he kept his posture. He said, no matter what it looks like, even though it looks like I'm being sacrificed on this cross, I'm going to stand in faith and trust God. And what God told me to tell everybody in here this morning is that in this season, as bad as it looks, for you at the crib, God told me to tell you that as bad as it might seem, you got to keep your posture. You got to stand in faith, even though the enemy is running rapid. Can I tell y'all something? The devil ain't going to stop. He ain't going to stop doing because he knows his time running out anyway. He ain't going to stop. But the question is, are we going to understand 
and remind ourselves daily that we can handle depression. I don't care what it is. I don't care what comes. Crazy bill come in the mail. I'm so tired of Barbara Caraway, I don't know what to do. Some of y'all don't know who she is. She's the city treasurer in Chesapeake. <laughs> Barbara Caraway don't say nothing to me the whole year. But come June 1, she want to check. <laughs> but it seems like every time you turn around, the enemy is throwing another curveball. If it ain't one thing, it's another. But will you stand in the betters box? I say, okay, devil. That was a good throw right there, boy. Come on with the next one. Are you going to make up in your mind that you're going to stand firm and trust in God no matter what it looks like? If you're here today, you know not the Lord in the pardon of your sins. If you're online today, you know not the Lord in the pardon of your sins. Do me a favor. Text accept to 71441. If you're in the building and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior and you want to know him today, all you got to do is come this way. All you got to do is step out your seat and come this way. If you're online, if you're in the building, if you want to rededicate your life to Christ, all you have to do is text RESTART to 71441. If you're in the building and you want to rededicate your life to Christ, you know that you're saved, but you also know that you haven't been living the way Christ wants you to live. If you want to restart today online, if you want to restart today in the building, you can text 71441, text restart, or you can just come to this altar. Amen. If you want to become a partner of the Mount at Virginia Beach, if you're online, if you're in the building, all you have to do is text Mount Up to 71441, and we can begin to do ministry together and begin to change lives. To God be the glory for the great things he has done. And now with all hands raised in the air, now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. I call you blessed in the city. I call you blessed in the field. I call you blessed when you come. I call you blessed when you go. In Jesus' name.